As the world continues to drive towards a net zero carbon future, it's clear that fossil fuels have a limited shelf life. Kind of feels like every time you turn on the news there's a story about it. So what's going to happen to petrol stations, gas stations, service stations? What does their investment outlook look like? Why are investors buying them? Why are they obtaining record low yields? And should you buy a service station in the current climate? Let's take a closer look because today we're talking tactics. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Tactics, where we give you the news, information, and tactics that you need to thrive in the business world. I've been forecasting the investment market for petrol stations for quite some time now. Actually, back in 2018, I wrote an article on it. I'll put a link in the description down below. The article was on a series called Thematic Property Investing. Basically, that means identifying long-term trends that we think will shape the future and investing in them, or choosing not to. In this episode, we're focusing on petrol stations, which are continually breaking records and setting new higher benchmarks. So why are people attracted to these investments? Well, a few key reasons include the global covenants underpinning the lease, companies that you know will reliably pay the rent. They are usually long-term leases, 10 to 15 years, with multiple option periods to extend. They are single tenant assets that are underpinned by triple net leases. That's where the tenant pays all the outgoings for the landlord. They will usually have main road exposure and the redevelopment potential in the longer term. A lot of these reasons make great investment sense and investors are flocked in, often fueled by cheap bank Debt. But also, a lot of people are reportedly buying these with cash, stating that they are sick of receiving 0.1% interest in the bank and would rather receive a 3-6% to yield on a long-term lease to a global oil company. But what's going to happen to these service stations when we no longer need fuel? What will this mean for asset values, particularly when the value of the service station is six times or more the value of the land? Can land prices really escalate that much? Jane Hunter, the CEO of Tritium, a Brisbane-based electric vehicle charging station company, has said this week that petrol stations are going to have their Kodak moment. Don't miss any of your moments. Just like you no longer go to your local Kodak store to get your photos processed, or you no longer go to your local Blockbuster to rent a video, petrol stations too will eventually no longer be necessary. So what's the shelf life of a petrol station? Can you still make money on them, or are they doomed to fail? One of the key considerations is the specialty nature of the property, the construction of which requires large tanks to be installed below the ground. This ground will also require remediation due to the contamination that is caused by these tanks. In Australia, it's predicted that 50% of all new car sales will be electric by 2030. I personally think it's going to happen a lot quicker than this. Jane Hunter also said that electric vehicles would cost less than internal combustion cars within three to four years. She said prices were falling thanks to the declining cost of the batteries, which is the most expensive component of an electric car. She explained the battery has been at 50% of the cost of the EV in 2016. I think it's going to come down to closer to 30% now. But can service stations pivot to not only sell fuel, but also include electric charge points? In America and Europe, they are already ahead of us here in Australia. Electrification has started to occur in service stations with a price displayed on the digital price pylon signs. But here's my prediction. More homes, apartments, and office buildings are going to include electric vehicle charge points. You can expect to arrive home and charge your car at home while you sleep, or at your office while you work. Do you really want to turn up to a service station after work to charge your car for 20 to 30 minutes? I personally just don't think it's feasible, unless of course, you're driving long distance and want to kill some time by also grabbing a meal. So here are my top tips if you're looking to buy a service station. Ensure that there is going to be a need for an alternative use for the land in the future. Whilst Netflix and the like put companies like Blockbuster out of business, at the end of the day, a lot of these buildings can be very easily repurposed for retail use. The same applies for the land that a service station sits on top of. Ensure that is part of the lease agreement, the remediation of the site is the obligation of the tenant. Make them pay for it because it's often hard to forecast what these costs will be or if the tanks have leaked, which they always do. Consider long-term leases, and in particular leases that don't expire until the 2030s, when you can redevelop the property. That's the likely time frame that we'll start to see service stations not to renew their leases. The service stations that are likely to be required, even when the majority of cars are electric, will be on main arterial highways, places where people will be traveling long distances and are outside of the typical home or office environment and require a recharge of the battery and associated retail convenience. People still need to eat on long roads road trips, so they'll continue to favour places where they can not only recharge their car, but also grab a meal and take a break. So what do you think? Am I just an electric vehicle fanboy? Do you think that people are still going to be driving petrol cars in 20 years time? Are service stations going to successfully pivot and redefine their offering? Or will they go the way of the Kodaks and the Blockbusters? 
I'd love to hear your thoughts, negative, positive, or otherwise. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll reply to every single one of you. If you'd like to see more videos like this, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe. We're here bursting with video ideas and the more subscribers we get, the more we can continue to invest in higher quality productions. My name is Mel Picos and today we've been talking tactics.